Capital T, and I'm an artist. Today I'm exploring the practices of artists Kim Bon and Andrew Shannon, and these artists have integrated performance into the act of painting in a very emotionally charged way. So Bon's method is exhibited here first in the way that um, I am pushing all of my anger and frustrations into the paint itself, as he um, had exhibited in his video here. I hear I'm expressing my frustration with the way that the art world has placed an arbitrary hierarchy on forms such as painting over forms such as performance. So I am also pained by the way uh, the Monet is overtaking the new portrait of myself, uh, the same way that uh, men have been overtaking art history since the beginning of time. So I have integrated Shannon's method and Bond's method and brought them into a feminist space. So as I transition uh, into Shannon's method, I go from the more uh, vocal expression, uh, as we see here, to a very physical expression of that frustration uh, with the status quo of patriarchal art culture, uh, how it relates to a capitalist negotiation of worth, um, as painting is given a very monetary value in such a way that performance uh, is rarely given. So. So I would speak to my own experience using the bomb method and the Shannon method would be quite liberating, but only once I had commanded it through my own personal method and made the process truly my own. So in the way that um, you know, Shannon was really not um, in a position of power to practice his artwork, um, you know, Monet showed even um, posthumously that he held a higher position of power than um, Shannon did uh, in terms of performance versus painting. So we see Shannon um, paying the consequences, and I, I, I do hope that, um, you know, in the way that I have also um, subverted the uh, power play um, by not really asking permission to use the painting um, before taking it from the studio, you know, a way to. Uh, play upon that activist mentality that artists um, and performers really relate to, so I am prepared. I do want to thank the um, uh, unwilling donor of the painting um, to allow me to kind of experience what Shannon might be going through uh, during this process, um, his power play within the art culture, so. There's a lot really going on here in terms of uh, final urges you know, and the way that um, you know, vocal expression is a very um, primal urge here. Like all humanities, um, all humans throughout uh, all cultures kind of express uh, emotion in this way. So we have here um, also the physical uh, way that humans across the world, across all cultures, are kind of uh, have that uh, commonality in the way that they express themselves. To subvert the object as an object of value of worth, but also uh, really experience the struggle against it, I bring forth uh, the use of a tool here uh, in the way that uh, creativity must break the barriers of frame. As we see here, I'm not uh, only using the tool to break the proverbial glass ceiling, but also to think outside of the quite literal box that is the frame in order to achieve the goal. Uh, but it does speak volumes that the use of my bodily strength alone cannot break the canvas itself, and that really speaks to how um, misogynistic the painting really is, uh, symbolically. Thanks for watching. Join you next time to see what I have explored in the art world next. So, radical. Hello again, Hello again everyone. everyone. So, so this, this is, is our first, first of two honorary segments. segments. Um, 
in true 2020 fashion, um, if I, our first honoree of the evening, Ms. Jack Cohen, was introduced to me virtually. And um, this was even before we had the name for an honoree. And so I had heard about her enormously wonderful reputation here in Cleveland through many uh, spaces affiliates. <laughs> And um, it was great to sort of chit chat and to introduce ourselves initially, but it was really wonderful to be able to talk to her um, extensively as a result of Faces naming her our 2020 annual benefit honoree. Joanne is a wonderful kind, uh, kind I know that she will kind of laugh at that, <laughs> a wonderful kind human who has been incredibly generous with me um, in sharing her time and um, sharing her own perspective in, in the Cleveland arts community. She's very deeply connected to spaces, having served as a board member and having participated in many of spaces' past events. Um, so in further 2020 fashion, um, a, a very big part of this honoree act is actually being done virtually. So Ms. Cohen, unfortunately, Mrs. Cohen, unfortunately, um, I didn't meet her in person until yesterday. And so we met virtually over Zoom. And I also had the opportunity to interview Ellen Rudolph, uh, our benefit committee member, and John Williams, former board president, who both spoke very kindly and lovingly of their friend Joanne Cohen. I would also like to extraordinarily thank all of the contributors and sponsors who helped, um, who donated in her honor and um, profoundly thank you all for all of the support that you provided for spaces in Joanne's honor. So from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you all so much. And now we're going to play the little honorary video that I made for her. <laughs> thank you, Joanne. <laughs> Just wait, wait one, one second, second here while the video queues up. I'll, I'll hang up for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'd be recording now. Um, okay. Uh -oh. So, kind of Going a. The house. General check-in question, um, you know, how, how is 2020 doing for you? <laughs> um, well, I think your idea of rolling back 20, you know, either going forward to 2021 seems like a wonderful idea. I mean, the only really great thing about 2020 is that you're here now at Spaces. So <laughs> that's, you know, one has to find the silver lining somewhere, right? Yeah, so. exactly. Silver linings abound um, and we are, we are seeking them all. Um, but yeah, so we are very deeply grateful to have you as our honoree this year. Um, it's definitely a, a very odd year to be doing anything, um, but we were thinking a lot about your role at the Cleveland Clinic's Art and Medicine Institute. Um, and so you've retired um, from that role, but I don't think in any sense of the word is that a capital R retired. <laughs> um, I, I would concur on that front. <laughs> Um, but you were absolutely formative in developing the collection. And so, um, you know, as the COVID cases kind of surge all around us and then your work there sort of becomes especially poignant, um, has your distance from that collection sort of cast a new perspective on it? Um, and, and how do you think it's sort of being interpreted now in this new light? Um, that's an interesting question, a really um, interesting question. I think, um, you know, I haven't had a chance to really um, you know, one of the things I'd like to do is go back and spend time in, in some of those surroundings and revisit a lot of the artwork I sort of think of as old friends, um, sort of to just to experience it through a new lens. But I think for me, it's always been about, uh, you know, seeing the power of art and how it really helps with the healing process and helps us get through difficult times. So for sure, you know, 2020, I would think that it would provide a lot of solace to a lot of people and very challenging situations and um and especially for those people who are coming into the facility for whatever reason it might be where they're just terrified anxious worried about the whole experience so you know anything to help alleviate that in some way and 
you know, and, and when we think about, you know, where we are today and thinking about things, levity is so important, right? So things to take your mind off or distract or provide some semblance of normalcy, like these are good things. So, um, you know, I think that I, I really hope that, um, you know, art is, it's fundamental through the human experience, right? And that's so people really recognize that having it in places like healthcare settings where, you know, those are some of your most intense um, experiences that um, the art is somehow going to, you know, alleviate some of the problems, some of the tension, some of the worry, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, that people are feeling. So, yeah. And thinking a lot about sort of how, how many patients are kind of on their own right now because of the conditions, you know, and how, how few people get to actually sort of feel comforted by, by fellow humans right now in this kind of really troubling time. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, I did experience the clinic when I, I was out of town for quite a while during pandemic, but I came back in June mm -hmm. and walked around on main campus, um, went to some appointments. Um, and so they had reconfigured all the waiting rooms. Um, because of social distancing. And so it was so bizarre to see all these, what were, you know, pretty, um, you know, conventional waiting rooms that were well thought out and the art was very much done, you know, placed in conjunction with all of that to suddenly have a, you know, a feeling of almost disorder to it. But yet, you know, so you might have had, instead of 20 chairs, you had 10 chairs and they were spread out and whatnot, but you could still count on seeing some artwork on the walls. And somehow to me, that was like a grounding experience. And I hope like for people also coming through who are, you know, so out of sorts that that will provide some kind of beacon of some, some kind of grounding. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Um, is there, is there a piece that you're particularly thinking about, you know, as, as people, as, as you hear about the sort of uh, people coming in and out of the clinic? You know, I haven't really thought about it so much in that context, but um, you know, the perennial favorite is always the Jennifer Steinkamp, um, uh, you know, digital imagery of a tree that cycles through the four seasons. And mm -hmm. people have always commented, I think that's a piece that's had more, you know, more commentary than any other of the 6,000 plus pieces, um, and more questions and people just interact with it, engage with it more. So mm -hmm. I think the whole notion that people still might be able to interact with it in a safe way, mm -hmm. um, to me is really key. I think that's also true, you know, the, the few instances where you might have outdoor sculpture also, that people can sort of reflect and spend a little more time with it and be less anxious at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. that it's safe. Um, you know, because clearly there are a lot of people who are avoiding spending a lot of time in healthcare, right? They want to get right. in, they get out and not linger. It used to be people would be there for hours on end and they go to a lot of appointments and there'd be downtime in between. And so you wanted to give them art as a respite and something to think of, you know, to experience, give them something other to do than just watch the news. Um, and now I think, you know, the idea that people can navigate and go outside between different buildings and maybe see some artwork along the way. Um, that's, you know, helpful, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's well, provided an interesting um, backdrop, I think, in a lot of ways as we're sort of also looking at sort of the uprisings that are happening around town or um, even the, the debates when they were in town, you know, the, the, the works are actually were, were on view briefly <laughs> on a national stage. And so thinking about how they actually present an, a very compelling backdrop in terms of like, uh, and you know, I, I'm sure you saw Arnold Schwarzenegger was like walking around town <laughs> and being like, he has a beautiful statue. <laughs> so thinking about the role of public artwork and how it takes up space in, in outside of itself, you know, is kind of a, an interesting um, condition. And so, yeah. Yeah, um, I love that he was, I forget if he was tweeting or if it was Instagram posts, but yeah, that, that was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. so like, oh yeah, great. That's why Cleveland is in the news right now. <laughs> um, oh, but yeah, yeah we, some other things, right? Yeah, some other things, no, nothing major. <laughs> um, um, but you have been involved in, in the Cleveland art scene for, for some time. And so um, I do wonder what motivates you or inspires you about the, the arts community in Cleveland? Well, you know, another great question. I mean, I came here in 19, and, and in 1994. So I guess I've been here a long time from New York City. And at first I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to survive? What's it going to be like? And the art um, community was so vibrant and thriving and, you know, open arms and committed and engaged. I mean, there'd been a history of, uh, you know, 
people really engaged in the arts for a long time in Cleveland, and I, you know, I credit all the arts nonprofits from Spaces to MoCA to Cleveland Museum, et cetera, um, our, you know, the Institute, all of that, um, I, I think helps fuel and educate and make people realize, I mean, there's so many great gems here. Yeah. So the, I think, you know, while the gallery scene might not have been so, you know, robust in the 90s, um, the commitment to art and the, uh, you know, the abundance of artists working here and the art was, the artists were so accessible and, you know, opening up their studios and all of that. And it just, it felt very collegial mm -hmm. and collaborative and, you know, all of that. So that was really an underlying attraction to it all, I guess. <laughs> it just helped ease, ease my way in. And I came here, went to work for uh, Toby Lewis and Peter Lewis at Progressive, helping to run their collection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, that was a great opportunity because it was a young workforce and there was just art everywhere. And it was really, you know, pushing the envelope. Um, and, you know, to be able to do that in the Midwest in the 90s was pretty yeah. uh, remarkable um, in that way. And, you know, that tradition has continued for so long. So how great is that? It's so interesting to me because uh, one of the first things that I heard about when I'm, and obviously like Spaces has a pretty deep connection to, to Progressive, our newest board president, Kristen Rogers is at Progressive, for example, but, um, um, but you know, right away I heard about the Progressive collection and the Cleveland Clinic Connect collection um, and thinking about sort of the past cities that I've been in. This is one of the first cities that I've been in where those, where those private collections are really functioning as these kinds of semi-public private collections you know um and the role of that within the city is actually pretty deeply felt like all of the artists are very familiar with these collections and even at worthington yards you know thinking about the relationship of those kinds of um places in terms of like how they connect with local artists and so um it's it's kind of a really interesting uh i mean model i guess <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I mean, the, you know, it sort of changed the paradigm. The art ecosystem here is so um, uh, user friendly and accessible, and um, it's amazing how you can really get to know everybody in the arts, mm -hmm. whether it's the funders or the artist or the collector or uh, you know the curator, etc. I mean, everybody's sort of in this same ecosystem, working together, and you know, all in it together. And it doesn't, and it just feels. Um, very um uh, you know workable in that way and not um disparate yeah. i guess I'd say um and you know the same way i mean i think about you know i'm on the board of front as well and yeah. like when fred bidwell thought of that at first we were scratching our heads cleveland could you really pull that off here and you know sure enough um of course fred has more gumption and you know he's <laughs> uh, incredibly ambitious and talented in that way but you know it was a uh, open arms so many institutions ready to participate and etc and you know hey let's try this um it goes back to like early days of when i got to cleveland there was a, a show urban evidence that was in a few different locations mm -hmm. um, and so you had big places like the Museum of Art and MoCA and artists who were involved, very involved in spaces who, you know, showed in all of the different venues. And, you know, that too is not something that you would probably see happen easily in a lot of big cities. And right. yet here in Cleveland, you know, everybody's there to work with one another. And I love also the proximity, like the, the students from the Cleveland Institute of Art um, and students from Case and Cleveland State. I mean, you know, there's great opportunities for them. Yeah, um, yeah, there really does feel like there's like, a plethora of options that sort of extend beyond sort of um, showing in someone's living room. <laughs> Not yeah. to besmirch that either. I think that that's yeah. like actually one of the coolest ways to see art, but. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, you know, I think everybody has fun. Like, you know, there's a yeah. tradition of everyone having so much fun at spaces, uh, you know, and, and so, uh, you know, at the openings, like the, there's just a nice energy about it. And, yeah. and you know, of course the, the zany Halloween parties. <laughs> you know the spaces benefits in costume etc uh, you know and that's that's the hardest thing you know it's it's weird sometimes you think about well this year you know obviously we have a virtual benefit um and trying to sort of bring some of that energy while literally everyone is trying to make things up as we go along like how do we do this how this is like a totally new model that everyone is embracing um or challenging I, yeah so it's yeah. kind of a it's an interesting 
time to be alive. <laughs> it's, and, you know, it's good to take risks. I mean, you know, one has to do that. And I think, you know, we'll all come out better for it if we can reinvent, you know, going back to same old, same old, like, no, let's look yep. at different ways to change things and shake them up. And, um, and I think you can do that in cities like this. Yeah, for sure. Um, so how did you become involved with spaces? <laughs> You know, I've had, I, I, uh, I should have thought of this beforehand. I'm trying to remember <laughs> if it was, maybe it was John Williams. I don't remember. Um, mm. I'm trying to remember the early days. It was John Williams, Robert Bostwick, the architect. Um, I don't remember if it was, you know, if it was people from Progressive or it's so, it's embarrassing, but it's so long ago. I mean, it might've been Susan Channing. I might've been the artist in the community. I, I can't really remember it so long ago. There were different iterations that I was involved in spaces. And at a similar time, I was involved with Zygo Press. Oh, another great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. mentioned them yet, but, you know, was on their board way back when. Uh, you know, another great place. Um, so I don't know. You know, it could have also been Bellamy Prince, who was one of the founders of space. I mean, of, sorry, of Zygo, yeah. um, who introduced me to space. I was like, I can't ever remember anymore. I'm getting old, I guess. Hi, partner. Boris, <laughs> say hello. Hello. Hi. New director at Spaces. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know a lot of physiognomists. Like. <laughs> yes. Fight and conquer. Oh my goodness. So yeah, none of us got much sleep around here last night. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you on that one. Um. Yeah. Okay. So then. Unclear when yeah, sorry that I don't have a better answer. You know, Susan That's Channing. Fine. It's uh, I mean, we know that you were you were involved for quite some time and it's, you know, obviously still a big part of the 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 broader arts community. And um I do wonder what do you have any favorite projects or spaces events that you were involved with? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, in in a in you know, in a crazy personal way, um Julie Langsom, artist who used to be in the community here, who taught at CIA, who then went on, to, who teaches at, in Rutgers in New Jersey. She and I cu co-curated a show okay. years ago at Spaces. And I think Susan Channing, I think she was ready to, you know, pull her hair out with us because we just kept growing the show and it went on and on and on. And, it, you know, we just, I guess we had lofty ideas of what we wanted to do. So, um, and that was a fun and long process. And it was also interesting at the time because, Julie and I worked on different schedules and she's, you know, a big thinker and she likes to think big from like midnight to four in the morning. And that didn't really <laughs> well work so well with me or the rest of the Spaces crew. Um, yeah. Team was gung-ho for the, you know, the end results. And so that, that was fun from a, you know, more personal level of like being in the trenches there. There were also um, a bunch of programs where we used to, and I forget, again, it's, it's a long time ago, so um, I'm fuzzy on the details, but... Um, sort of you know before the sort of uh, artist residency programs there were those programs we used to do where we would um, jury a lot of artwork that came in uh, mm -hmm. proposals that came in I mean it's a long time ago I can't remember what that program was even called um, but we would sit for hours I think you know John would bring the M&Ms and the Skittles <laughs> um, but we'd sit for hours and um, you know you'd get to see such an array of um, artists work images you know I think I might be dating myself but it might have been slides back you know could have been <laughs> slides back then so long ago um, uh, but we would go through so many submissions from artists around the country and it was really just great to see a the energy and eclectic nature of all the art work but also just how many artists were interested in exhibiting in spaces so yeah you know that was uh, pretty tremendous to, yeah you know, I just, I'm sorry that I, you know, somebody with a good history of spaces and a better memory than me would say, oh yeah, that was such and such, you know, program, but. Well, I was dredging our archives to find uh -huh. some wonderful images of you at spaces. Uh -oh. and there are so few. I feel like everyone sort of knows the legacy and then you're like, okay, but where's the evidence? <laughs> yeah. I think it was, uh, you know, uh, not, you know don't love being in front of the camera sort of thing and was never good. <laughs> and to be honest I was never good at um you know creative uh costumes and things like that that so many of your other uh people involved in spaces especially all the artists are so I would always just kind of you know come in and <laughs> not, be, not be very memorable on that front so um versus some of my colleagues who 
you know. Yeah. Really Let me just close the door. Oh, for sure. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think back to, you know, I wish I'd had time and gone back in the sort of my thinking about things, but um, yeah, I know I have, a, I have to say I have a lot of artwork uh -huh. that I have procured from over the years at Spaces. I mean, so many works and I'm starting to get fuzzy on remembering name. That's the other thing, like remembering. I know that artist was here. They taught for a while. What happened to them? Where did they go, et cetera? But, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I love private collections because people always, because you end up not having to do labels and then you have to sort of either try to guess contextually who the artist is. Right. <laughs> it kind of like does this really cool trick of like almost, you know, if it's not like a cause or something, <laughs> you right, almost have right. to kind of, you know, guess and just be like, you know, it, it takes away that sort of like value added, you know, signature kind of moment. Um, and and, and allows you to kind of just like appreciate it and understand it a little bit more. So, yeah. Um, there was, there were so many great shows at Spaces over the years and, you know, and a lot of projects where you thought, you know, as a board member, like, are they really going to pull this off? Is that going to really, you know, and sure enough, you know, uh, the team at Spaces at the time would make it happen. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. So. We've got some diligent folks here. So. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, you know, our, our, uh, our, our motto, our, our modus operandi in general is that we are the resource for artists to explore and experiment. And so um, I think that it's absolutely true to think about spaces in terms of that context about how we are there to make these crazy wild visions. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> reality. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so just to wrap this up, I did want to read you some of the notes that people have written about you for our benefit. Okay. <laughs> I know. Frightening. <laughs> and there, it, I just picked a few select ones. Um, there was one response that was, I'm not even going to tell you who they were. So you can just sort of like imagine these like love notes coming from people around the world. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, someone responded, you know I love Joanne, <laughs> so there was so much enthusiasm right away. Send, uh -huh. our, send Joanne our love, someone else wrote, and someone else wrote, my sponsorship is in honor of my dear friend Joanne Cohen. Oh. Um, I tip my hat toward her. Congratulations, Joanne. Oh. Cleveland is lucky to have you, and I would agree with that. Um, and someone else wrote, it is our honor to honor Joanne. <laughs> so it is also Spaces' honor to honor Joanne. <laughs> um, of course, we owe you a massive thank you for, from all of us at Spaces for everything that you've done and continue to do to provide artists with opportunities um, and support, especially in these difficult times. And so thank you for agreeing to be our honoree. Thank you for joining me in this recording. And if you have any last words or thoughts, I welcome them now. <laughs> well, um, you're uh, most gracious and I'm um, so humbled and, you know, I'm so uh, appreciative of all that Spaces does. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about giving artists opportunities and you continue to do that. How great is that, right? So, um, you know, it's vital to everything and especially in a city like Cleveland, and especially in a time like now. So, um, you know, the hard work, all that you do is amazing. So, and I'm so thrilled for you to be a part of it and so you know feel so badly that you are not really getting to feel and experience Cleveland as you should in this crazy pandemic but um this too shall pass um and I know that people will um you know greet you with open arms um and look forward to that and at some point you know doing some crazy dancing on the spaces dance <laughs> that yeah. those are some really funny moments so. I I'm so looking for, I've seen all of the pictures of past benefits and I'm just like, oh man, we need to, we need to wild out at some point. <laughs> uh, well, you're young, so I'm sure you're going to, uh, you know, <laughs> that well, no doubt. So, all good, great energy and, um, and it's a great location too, right? So that's another great thing is having watched spaces move and the different iterations and, you know, having it. Sorry, my lights just went off. <laughs> yes. Well, it's time for me to stop talking. So there you go, right? It's a good um, cue. Um, I know signs from, from above telling us to go refresh our news sources. <laughs> well, you were an incredibly 
wonderful and gracious distraction also from everything Thank else. You. Likewise, I, I, I echo the sentiment and um, I'm gonna stop recording now. All right, so it says we're recording. Hello, John Williams and Ellen Rudolph. Um, how are you guys today in this absolutely normal, don't worry about it kind of day? <laughs> <laughs> totally everything's perfect <laughs> if you see my head moving it's not to check the uh, results <laughs> wasn't uh three o'clock the time that we were uh, they're supposed to release a whole bunch of results you know they've been promising that since last night and it's you know it is what it is we'll see what happens yeah well um inhale exhale um, thank you for joining us today. Sounds good. <laughs> in, in celebrating Joanne as a 2020 annual benefit honoree. Um, we were really excited to, to um, be announcing her and have her as a part of our program. Um, I had a really great conversation with her yesterday. And I wondered, John, um, if you might help fill in some gaps. So she, I had asked her how she first became involved with spaces. Um, and I think there were just kind of like a lot of, uh, you know, spaces just gets kind of like brought into your life and you don't know how it happens or when it happened. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's all just a blur of joy. And so, um, yeah, I have a bit of history from her time on the board um, and just general engagement with spaces, but it would be great to hear if you have any more details about how she became involved. Wow, that you're you're relying on me to actually have a reasonably good memory for that. Um, you know, this might help, and, and I'll, I'll rewind even a little bit further and just say, you know, Joanne and I first met when she came um, to Cleveland from uh, New York. Her parents had moved here um, years prior, and she and Morris joined them. I'm going to say almost 25 years ago, and her mother was very involved with MoCA, which mm -hmm. was the uh, Cleveland Center for Contemporary Art at the time. And uh, I was involved with them as well. And there was a woman that worked there, Lindy Barnett, who's also awesome. Um, but Joanne's mother was also a very pivotal um, person for contemporary art uh, in Cleveland uh, with, with long relationships with the Center for Contemporary Art, later MOCA or currently MOCA. Um, but Lindy put Joanne and I together, we hadn't met yet, um, to do a program where we actually did uh, art tours of homes, private tours of homes on the east side, um, bicycling, because we were both bicyclists. So that's how she and I started to, to meet and get involved with, um, with artwork, but it was through cycling. And then I believe shortly after that, I got pulled into spaces and then I, she may correct this, uh, I might've been on the board and then got her involved as well. So, um, you know, uh, her, her involvement with spaces dates from pretty much when they first got to Cleveland. And she's always been a, an engaged, good supporter of the organization. <laughs> Yeah, I, it, it's, it's been really uh, great to hear about, but there's, I, I think I shared with you guys that there's very little evidence. I'm trying to find all the images of Joanne from past events. <laughs> um, so do you guys have, uh, you know, I only found one great photo of her in our archives um, from a past annual benefit. I think it was the Space Invaders benefit. Um, so do you guys have any memories of working with her on projects or anything at Spaces? <laughs> Ellen? Um, that's a good question. I, I'm trying to remember the title of the exhibition, um, but when I wrote to Steve Shane, he mentioned that she had curated an exhibition um, at Spaces that uh, he lent some work to Mm -hmm. uh, loaned some work to and um, here we go. <laughs> um, and it happened to be an exhibition that uh, I was working at Spaces um, at the time that it was uh, that it was mounted, and I was doing some uh, marketing for Spaces. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so that's probably the a project that I 
th that I recall working with her uh, on, you know, while I was at Spaces, but, um, you know, but I, more broadly, she just, you know, when she gets involved with an organization, she, um, she really commits and she, she's amazing in, in terms of the energy that she, uh, that she contributes. And, um, you know, she's always so full of ideas and, uh, and connections and it, you know, it's just, it's, it's infectious. You know, I, I just, that reminds me, I mean, I'm wondering, was that the painting exhibition that she might have curated with Julie Langsam? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, I think I was still, I might have stepped off the board by that time, but I can remember walking in the gallery at that point and just going, oh my God, this is as good, if not better, than anything you'd see in New York, Chicago, LA, San Francisco. It was a remarkable exhibition. Um, so I, that just reminded me of that. Um, you know, if, if asking about projects, Joanne uh, did sit on the search committee with me mm -hmm. uh, when we did the search that brought us Christopher Lynn. Mm. Um, so she was on that search committee and we worked very, very closely on that. So since you just went through this with spaces, that might also evoke <laughs> some, uh, some good responses. But uh, Joanne, um, you know, again, she, when you ask for help, when you ask for her expertise, especially when it's involving contemporary art, um, she just has a breadth of knowledge that you don't see with many people. Yeah. Yeah, and we had a really great conversation. Um, you know, a, a big part of why we chose her was also in relation to your exciting new role, Ellen, that you've fully stepped into <laughs> as curator and senior director at Cleveland Clinic Art Program, um, which she recently, you know, retired. I, I keep joking that it's a little R because she's by no means actually retired. <laughs> I'm not sure that word is in her vocabulary. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so, so we were talking a bit about, she and I had talked a bit about sort of the, the role of art, um, you know, in, in times like these. And so I think, um, you know, can you, Ellen, from your, from your perspective, sort of stepping into this collection, share a bit about, um, its role at the clinic and how Joanne approached collecting? Yeah, so the art at Cleveland Clinic is, um, you know, it, it activates all of the spaces that, um, that people um, move through. And I, in that sense, I think it's, it's has an incredibly important role. Um, uh, it's inspiring. I think it's in, uh, often it's really surprising and amazing, particularly with the um, numerous site-specific installations that, that Joanne uh, stewarded. Um, and, uh, the, you know, I think the, um, the collection serves to calm people, to inspire them, to challenge people to think in different ways, um, to, to act as a kind of escape, um, from where, uh, a, a stress that someone might be dealing with. Um, and as I said, it, it also is very important, um, sort of as a, uh, wayfinding and, um, uh, you know, activating these, these large, uh, expansive spaces that you encounter at the clinic. Mm -hmm. Um, and Joanne's approach to building the collection. <laughs> Should I mute or? <laughs> um, John and I are both <laughs> approach to building the collection. I mean, as John said, she is so incredibly knowledgeable, uh, and uh, and you know has boundless. Um, is has always been um, you know stayed up on everything that's happening in Northeast Ohio, um, nationally, internationally. Um, she is very, very thorough in keeping herself informed about what's going on in, in the art scene. Um, and so she's, uh, 
you know, I, she's very open. Uh, she looks for a diverse approaches, um, artists from all over the world. Uh, she's been, you know, very uh, deliberate in um, collecting artists from the region, uh, ensuring that there's a large proportion of, um, of women artists, uh, of, you know, artists of color. Uh, I guess my son didn't, didn't see my sign. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, he did. He says. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I I feel so incredibly fortunate to be walking into such an amazing collection, and I'm I'm you know I'm constantly learning and seeing uh, new things that 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 I get to work with, um, and so it's it's just it's been really incredible, and I'm i you know so I. I as I said, I just feel enormously fortunate to to walk into uh, a collection and to be able to build on uh, the collection of, uh, you know, the caliber of the collection that it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much of the collection is visible? Is it the entire collection or is it, is there any that's sort of like absconded? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, it, 98% of it is is on view. I mean, we have 38 million square feet uh, of space, uh, sort of enterprise wide. So there's never any, uh, you know, shortage of walls to to fill. Yeah, with art. that was one of the really great parts of the conversation that she and I had. Also, specifically relating it to like this. I mean, in Cleveland in particular, there's this really interesting relationship between public and private art collections and private collections actually functioning as semi-public collections like mm -hmm. Progressive, which you're also familiar with, as well as Cleveland Clinic and, and their roles in terms of like fostering um, a sort of uh, collective arts community throughout Cleveland. So I guess I, for both of you, I mean, I wonder if you could also both speak to Joanne's role specifically within Cleveland Cleveland's arts communities. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of artists from Cleveland represented, not just in the Cleveland Clinic's collection, but also in her own collection. So, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, as I said, she, Joanne is just, she is so um, fully dedicated to art, uh, to, to the sort of the pursuit of collecting art, as you mentioned, uh, personally, certainly on behalf of the clinic. Uh, when she was at Progressive on behalf of Progressive and um, supporting artists, supporting the art institutions that support artists um, and, and just engaging intellectually. Um, so, you know, I, I think, as I said, she's, she's just really always been all in. She's incredibly passionate and, um, and it shows in, you know, in, in her actions. Mm -hmm. and her you know her engagement yeah she she is certainly uh or has been a fixture in the cleveland art scene it, you know everybody knows he, who she is all the artists know her um she does studio visits all the time with them and you know yes when it came to progressive where she worked when she first moved um to cleveland and then the clinic you know there she's looking at more maybe blue chip contemporary artists that have well-established names, but she was always, always looking for um, regional artists and local artists here, but also just what was happening in the art scene nationally and internationally. Um, to find who was doing something interesting and something new. And, and again, I think people embraced her because they could see immediately that this was somebody that was passionate about the art, passionate about the artists and supporting them, but also very, very knowledgeable about art, not just from a collector standpoint, but about the art itself and what the art means. <laughs> I think that's really that's really um, great to hear, especially you know um, as it relates to to spaces, because I think a big part of what we do is about sort of fostering that kind of um, engagement at both the local and the national level, be it with blue chip artists, but also hometown artists. And so um, you know, it's it's a really 
wonderful thing to hear about how folks like her are have engaged with spaces in the past. Um, so yeah, um, I kind of wanted to also finish this in, in terms of saying like, I know that you both have a lot of thoughts on, um, on Joanne and I just wanted to see if you guys wanted to share a few words with our audiences about your friend and colleague. <laughs> Uh, um, you know, I, I will I will share one story, and it's some a story that uh, Joanne has heard me tell, but um, it kind of speaks to <clears throat> who she is as an artist, uh, patron, arts patron, and uh, a promoter. But you know, oftentimes when I would be in New York for an art fair, she would be there, and we would meet in Chelsea and hit galleries. And she's great to go to galleries because she's so efficient. I loved going to gallery spaces with her, but since um, she, you know, she worked in New York for a long time and everybody knows her there, she would also get invited to private tours of uh, private collections. And that's, I love to see how people live in their homes with their art. And there was one stop that we made in particular, it was in Chelsea or Midtown, and it was just a large, big open room. Um, and we got in there and, and she, we stood in the middle and she just scanned all the, the walls. And I said, okay, who is hanging here? And this isn't blue chip. These aren't well-known artists. And she, we rotated and she pointed to probably 30, 35 pieces of art and named every artist and maybe one or two I had heard of. And as she was doing this, the owner of the loft came over and said, how on earth do you know all these artists? And it's, you know, Joanna teased her about her, her total recall. She just remembers names and, <laughs> art and artists and locations. But that hammered home to me. It's like, oh my God, she really, she really knows this and researches it and understands the artists and the artist trends. That's wonderful to hear. <laughs> Ellen, do you have any thoughts that you wanna share? Sure, um, she does have legendary artist name recall. <laughs> she, knows, she knows everybody and she remembers, um, she remembers, uh, you know, the artwork and the artists, uh, which is in incredible. Um, and, you know, I think it's just that Again, she's so incredibly passionate and she cares deeply, um, you know, about the placement at, at the clinic, at the plate, about, you know, the placement of every single artwork. She had incredible vision for, you know, um, all these site specific uh, commissions, how to occupy space and, um, and partner with artists. And as we know, um, sometimes those processes, you know, work much smoothly than others, but, um, you know, kind of powering through them and working out every single tiny detail, um, you know, I, I just, uh, it, it comes through in, in everything that, that she has done, and, um, and it's been absolutely a pleasure. It was, it was really a pleasure to kind of reconnect with her uh, at the clinic during the time that we spent together since we had worked together at, at Progressive. And uh, I, you know, I just really felt like I was working with a kindred spirit who, um, you know, who has a, an incredible eye and passion for, for contemporary art and, and, you know, just really cares about the experience of, of the um, people who encounter that artwork. My lights just went out. That's all right. <laughs> Got some nice natural light going on. Um, th that's all really wonderful to hear. Um, I'm so glad that you guys could both join us on, on Zoom remotely in this 2020 era that we find ourselves in. <laughs> um, celebrating Joanne. Um, as, as you know, there were uh, many people who just poured forth to help support spaces knowing that we were honoring Joanne and so I'm really grateful for that um, and it's been really great to sort of even remotely meet with her and meet with you guys and hear about her lasting impact on our communities um, and yeah so with that I will I will stop recording as they say in in zoom world um, and thank you both again <laughs>